Right, thank you very much for staying um, to listen to me. Um, maybe partly the reason could be as well that it's raining outside, but I'll take it as well, I don't mind. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more, something that I feel very closely about is um, creativity. Um, fantastic introduction there by, by Julian. I mean, um, first of all, I'm very proud to have been accepted in the Royal Academy two years ago. Um, being part of the Sky Arts, I mean, I, I got through 600 um, artists down to 48. And um, I then went through to the next round. And um, I'm, I, I feel overwhelmed that I managed to experience that and try to uh, show off my work, at least internationally. Um, but today, I, I want to, instead of doing uh, my life sort of story, um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about exactly this. To what extent can we learn to be creative? Um, basically, I mean, what is creativity? I mean, we tend to sometimes talk about um, how, how um, I'm not good at art, or, or no, that I, I've never been really good at drawing, etc. Um, and it's, it's something that, it's sort of a, it's a myth, because um, creativity is different to, you know, normal, in inverted commas, normal intelligence. You've got normal intelligence and, and creative intelligence. Um, creativity is the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into reality. I mean, what does that really mean? It's, it's to be honest, trying to be uh, novel, trying to break the boundaries, trying that element of surprise. Isn't it, isn't it boring? I mean, when we do the same thing over and over again, even in our lives, um, we always try and be a little bit, you know, try and break the norm. And when we do something new, we, we sort of embarrass, um, you know, welcome it as well. Um, what creativity involves is mainly two processes, uh, thinking and then producing. Um, we can, we get this confusion sometimes that we think that um, a, being imaginative is the same thing as being creative, um, which is not the case. You can be really imaginative and, um, and not necessarily be creative. And I'll explain a little bit more, and I'm going to prove to you that every single individual in this auditorium today is creative in some way or another, all right? Um, First of all, I mean, what are, I mean, the, the two kinds of creativity that we've got is basically being innovative and being um, inventive. We've got there the, the gramophone, right? The gramophone um, was an invention that sort of sparked off a lot of other um, innovative innovations later on. Um, for example, um, without the gramophone, perhaps we wouldn't have had the Walkman, the Discman, the tape recorder, the iPod, the iPhone that we so welcome nowadays and we use so much. Um, and it all stemmed from the same, this machine that was found, uh, oh sorry, that was made um, to play music. Um, the same idea with, the, with, for example, the charcoal um, drawing on, in caves. Uh, later came the inkwell. From the inkwell, we came to the biro, the biro, the pen. The pen, nowadays, we have a pen for an iPad that doesn't have any ink at all. You know, so we've got this evolution. But is the iPad pen more important or, or less important than the, the, the charcoal or, or the, the inkwell? Well, basically, it's an innovation of something that came later. Um, so, um, how can we be creative? Um, experimentation. I did not want to talk too much about my work, but I am going to very shamelessly talk about a little bit about this piece uh, and a bit about the Royal Academy. Um, being creative, what, what, what really is it about? It's about being experimentational. It's being about um, breaking the norm. It's about, in a way, being different and, and, and trying to, to, you know, don't, Worry if something comes out wrong, just redo it, do it again. Um, one of the things that, that stayed in my head from the um, Royal Academy is the adjudicator and the curator, um, two big names in the art world, in the international art world. They said what they loved about the piece was basically that um, it was a, a painting done on a piece of metal. And um, this is not something new that I've done, it's been done many times before, but in different ways. Um, and the story behind that painting was that um, actually when I was going for a jog um, near the dockyard, um, in one of the um, bus stops near the dockyard, I found this scrap piece of metal. And, um, and I found it so interesting what was happening with the rust. And um, I thought, well, I'll take it, take it to my studio and do something with it. But I was thinking more something more abstract. Um, stayed there on the side for three or four weeks. And then all of a sudden, when I was paint, um, cleaning my brushes and, and cleaning some of my um, uh, acids and stuff, 
some fell on this actual um, scrap metal, and um, and a reaction started to happen. I thought, how interesting! It reminded me of clouds, to be honest. I thought, how interesting would that would it be if you had like a landscape or some sort on it? And um, that's when I did. I went back, took photographs of the views from the dockyard, and I did a, a view of Bayview um, Clock Tower. And this is the piece that eventually got selected. If if it wasn't for the creativity and, and you could say that brave aspect of just you know, rather than doing it on a canvas or on a board, because the painting is really not the important part here. It's the, the process of how to get there. Um, and here, I mean, it's the same thing. You've got a, a sheet of metal with, um, this was Sacred Heart Church, um, painted upon the, the actual metal. Um, who cares if, if, you know, if it doesn't work? You can just redo it again. Um, what... How can we, be, can we be, uh, learn to be creative? Yes, we can. We might recognize this individual over here. Um, every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. That is spot on. It couldn't be more, more, more spot on. Um, simply because when we're younger, I, we have absolutely no problem at all in showing off our drawing, like going to everyone and, and showing them, you know, our, our horse, our frog, our ha anything that we draw. We want to we wanna, uh, hear what people want to think about it. Slowly as we grow older, that is completely out the window. You know, we begin to be a little bit more judgmental on ourselves and on others. Um, why do you, do, this morning, did you choose a certain clothes to wear? Why did you, you know, why do you comb your hair a certain way? It's, even though you do it, in the commas, for yourself, right, you do it as well, you know, so that people don't criticize you in a way, all right? And this is something about your art and being about creativity. And as we grow older, we, we begin to be a little bit more narrow-minded. That is every single individual, in a way. Um, how can we stay creative? Um, well, this is, this is all about. It's all about your, your left and your right. And what I'm talking about here mainly is um, your, your brain, your left and your right hemisphere. Um, you've got your left side that controls the right side of your body. You've got your right side that controls your left side of your body. But it's a known fact, right, scientifically proven, that the left side of your brain is your logical side. This is um, basically your accountants, your lawyers, your businessmen. Um, they will have a higher percentage of, um, of this... Um, left side being used daily. Um, and obviously, if you use that a lot more every week, then the less you're going to be using on your right-hand side and the more comfortable you are, because you as an individual, you do what you're comfortable. Um, the right-hand side is basically your creative side. Your, art, your artists, your musicians, your actors, your chefs, if you like cooking, you know, and you want to venture out, that is your creative side being spawned out. You know, the, the, the creative side really pushing itself. Now, there were um, some individuals in history that really, really exercised a good balance between both. It's very difficult, it's very difficult, but we have characters like um, Albert Einstein. If Albert Einstein wouldn't have been um, creative, he would never have discovered the theory of relativity. Um, it was his creative side that pushed the, the logical side, because at the end of the day, he was a very intelligent individual. But it was that balance that actually created, um, well, helped him discover this. We had Da Vinci. Da Vinci, um, um, we're talking about this for late 1400s, 1475. Um, there's a lot of memoirs. Um, he used to you know, doodle and sketch quite a lot. And he, there's, there's a, a drawing that he did of um, this machine, this vehicle, um, and with, with two, with two um, propellers on top of the vehicle. Um, we're talking about the, at the end of the 1400s. He called it the securis. Securis is the, the Latin word for um, the chopper. So he was already talking about something about, like a helicopter. Um, and then we got Michelangelo, who Michelangelo had the special awareness of, you know, of, out of this world. Um, I don't know who's been to Rome and who's seen La, La Pietà. Um, La Pietà is a, is a wonderful, it's not life-size, it's bigger, um, um, uh, sculpture of Lenny Magdalene with Jesus Christ. And, um, and to create that piece is absolutely ridiculous. So you have to be really forward thinking. Um, so we've got these three individuals. How do, do you keep yourself intact? Well, we've got something called brain gyms, all right? Now, the brain gym is something that... Um, that, that is, is an exercise that a lot of big companies do. Virgin, O2, um, Apple do it a lot to keep 
people fresh, right? Now, you do a brain gym subconsciously all the time anyway. Um, when you're on the phone and you're speaking to someone and you're doodling, all right? You're doing scribbles. That is basically a brain gym already. Um, you're doing something in the physical that is different, all right? And is not in comparative to what, what you're doing, for example, when you're over the phone. Um, and it may not necessarily be linked, right? Today, we're going to do a little bit of a brain gym, all right? Um, I've got some scared faces I see out there. Um, basically, we all, you all were very kindly given a piece of paper and a pencil. What I would like you to do is just have that in front of you. You can lean on your, on your um, booklets, on your brochures. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to follow my instructions. Um, you will have six points to follow, all right? You're, not gonna have, you're gonna be very timed as well. So basically the pressure's going to go on you guys now as well. Um, the first thing I would like you to do is draw a house. Now it's up to you how you draw that house, okay? You've got a couple of seconds, I'm giving you like 10 seconds, let's put it. Um, 10 seconds just to draw a house. It's up to you what you draw on that piece of paper in reference to the house. Once you've done that, you can add a front door and a window. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bring them up on stage, I'm not gonna embarrass you, I'm not gonna put them, I'm not gonna uh, analyze them individually. I will give you a little bit of a breakdown, all right? And you can analyze them yourself, okay? So you've got the front door, you've got window, windows, it's up to you what you do with that. Please don't cheat, look at your own one, don't, part, don't look next door. I can see some of you already looking at what the person next to you is doing. Um, walkway. A walkway or a path, all right? Add that to your, to your drawing, right? A walkway or a path. Up to you how you do it, again. See the gentleman down there very focused as well. Really into his drawing. Um, okay, some sun, clouds, all right? Let's fix up the weather, all right? Let's add a sun, some clouds. If you want to add something in the background, you may as well, you may add something else. Fantastic. And finally, a quick sketch of yourself, all right? Quick sketch, now, I know, I know. All right, quick sketch of yourself. I am not looking for hyper-realistic drawing. I'm, again, I'm not gonna embarrass you. Just a drawing that could represent you. So for example, um, do you have a lot of hair? Do you like wearing a hat? Do you wear a tie? Do you, something that resembles you within you, okay? And, <laughs> I see a lot of people that are um, apprehensive about this one. That's your last point, I promise. Right. Okay, we can stop there. All right. You're not allowed to add anything once I start talking now, okay? First thing, is your house made out of harsh lines? All right, you will look at your own drawing, you can analyze it yourself. Um, do, does it have rough sketch lines? Okay? Is your house located in the center of the paper? Did you add another house? Right? Some of you may have done that. Um, is your house on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Um, your windows, are they big? Are they uh, small? Are they open or are they closed? Are there curtains in your window? Your front door, your front door, does it have um, a doorknob? Have you added a mailbox? Right? Has anyone, put your hand up if you've added a mailbox or added a doorknob or something. All right, excellent. I didn't tell you to do that, you've done that yourself. All right, easily about 20 people there, put their hand up. All right, path, straight path, curvy. Put your hand up if you've done a straight path. All right, one, logical. All right, curvy. Wow, <laughs> excellent. Bedroom, which floor was it? That only you will know that, all right? Your garden. Right, your garden, is it messy or is it trimmed, okay? Do you have... <laughs> I see what you're thinking. <laughs> flowers, did you add flowers? Have you added a tree, etc.? Right, all this information analyzes you as a person, okay? If you want, before my time runs up, okay, I can see the time ticking down. Um, but um, if you want me to analyze your, uh, your drawing, I will, I will uh, kindly, you can photograph it, you can send it to me if you want. Um, it's up to you. Um, or I can, you can stop me later on. I can tell you quickly, if you've left your windows open, if you have your, draw, your curtains drawn, all right? If you're drawn, it means you're a very introvert person. If, you've, if your window is open, it means that you're an open person. If you've added a fence to your garden, if you've added some features to your garden, 
for example, a fence is that you are very protective. If you've added a clothesline, all right, it means you are a very family orientated person. Your tree is your, if you've added a tree, has anyone added a tree? Wow. Right, if you've added a tree, if your bark is quite big, it means you have a big ego, right? <laughs> if, you have, if you have a small bark, it means that you're an introvert, all right? Um, it's details on, the, on, the, on your, on your uh, house, roof, right? Anyone added tiles or anything like that? Chimney, right? If you've added a chimney, right, it means that you have fantasies that you haven't reached yet and you're trying to get, all right? <laughs> Yourself, do you, have you given yourself a big hairdo, all right? If, you've, if you have, it means that you think quite large of yourself, all right? <laughs> and the list goes on. Moral of the story, you've all interpreted your drawing in your own individual way. And that has made, that has shown that you can be creative. And at no point now, in the last three minutes, four minutes, you've thought about, right, what am I going to do after, after Jib talks? Um, what am I going to cook tonight? Who do I need to pick up? You are focused completely on, in your right-hand side of the brain. And that is basically proving that you can be creative. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carl Alger. <laughs> Carl, this is what I came up with. What does that say about me? <laughs> Royal Academy. <laughs> Royal Academy material. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you. Thank you.